channel. I hope that everyone is having an amazing day. Happy hump day. Hope you guys are doing well and having a great day so far. So today's video is just kind of gonna be like a bunch of things, but overall we're just hanging out in my room. <laughs> so as you guys know, if you follow me on Snapchat or Instagram, yesterday I told you guys that I got my period and guys, it was a rough one. It was just like, I got it and it immediately had cramps. Just like felt so like bloated and just, crampy. So I thought in today's video we can kind of talk about that, talk about some period tips, the smoothie that I'm drinking right now, I did film it, so I am going to show you guys how I make it on camera, and that way you guys can make this delicious smoothie. It's good no matter what, but especially good if you have your period, because it's rich in iron, vitamins, minerals, and it tastes really good and really sweet, because I know I'm not the only one that gets sweet tooth cravings when you have your period. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna talk about that, but also I asked you guys on Instagram if you guys want to do a little Q and A today and just kind of sit on my bed and hang out. So that's also what we're gonna do. So the first question that I always get asked as far as periods go is, do you have to work out on your period? Is, is it okay if you skip your workouts? Is it okay if you don't feel like working out? So yesterday I did have a kickboxing class that I've been going to and really enjoying, but it was day one of my period and I was like, oh hell no. Like I just felt like not every period is bad for me. Some periods are like kind of easy breezy, like they're annoying, yes, who likes having it? Nobody. But they are like not atrocious either. I did end up skipping my kickboxing class, but what I did do is I did go on a long walk and that made me feel so much better. Exercise does help your period. It helps with bloating, it helps with cramps, it helps to just move the body when you have it because when you are like all like tight and tense and just like all crawled up in a ball, like uh, this hurts. Like I know I do the same thing, but when you do that, you'll notice that you do feel more crampy and you just overall don't feel good. So it's best to work out a little bit. You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to do your normal workout if you're not feeling up to it, but you can do little things like going on a walk or you know, doing some stretches or maybe some planks or something like that. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to do like anything intense to like get rid of the bloating. Okay, so now let's get into the most delicious smoothie that I've made so far as far as like greens go, because you know, when you add greens into your smoothie, they can be like a little bitter or like taste like you're drinking a salad. So I am going to be sharing my current smoothie that I am literally obsessed with. Okay, so first I'm going in with some frozen mangoes. Mangoes are rich in vitamin C, which will make your skin super clear, not to mention that they taste amazing. Now I'm going in with one banana, which is high in potassium, and overall will make your stomach feel so much better. And then, last but not least, you can go in with either kale or spinach, and I found this little thing online that I want to share with you guys. And basically, it's just saying that spinach and kale are both high in calcium, which helps with menstrual cramps. So I thought that that was really cool and I want to share that in today's video. And then you can go in with unsweetened almond milk or water or coconut milk, whatever you want, and then blend it all up and you have this tropical yummy blend. So now we're going to be getting into the Q&A. Thank you again for everyone that asked questions. And if I didn't answer your question, then I definitely will in a vlog or another video because I know I got so many, but a lot of you guys ask similar questions. So even if I didn't get your particular question, it could be, could be answered in another way. So the first question is actually about a smoothie and Casey Sippler um, asked, what is your favorite smoothie recipe? So really anything with greens, mixed with fruit and then either water or unsweetened almond milk, I think is a perfect recipe for, I don't know, health, wellness, feeling good. So my second question comes from Alba Escuda. I'm sorry if I mispronounce, <laughs> I'm sorry if I mispronounce anybody's name. I know that that could be super annoying. Trust me, I grew up with the last name Oscar, and you would be, you would be on the floor laughing at how many different pronunciations. Even at my own high school graduation, they said my name wrong. Like they knew me, I went to that high school and they still said, Ozukuro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she asks, when did you start your health and fitness journey? Love the positivity you bring out in all of your videos. Oh, thank you so much. So I first started my health and fitness journey in 2013 is kind of when I started, but I had many fails then. That's kind of when I noticed that I was 20 pounds heavier than I had ever been in my life. 
Um, and I am really tiny, I'm only like five foot, just a little bit over five foot, like a little, I don't know, five one, five foot. I am tiny, so I felt like you could see it more. Um, some of you guys have pointed out in my old videos, even though some of them are just sit down videos, you could see in my face that I had more weight on me. You know, gaining an extra 20 pounds, you can see it more. Um, but regardless, I did kind of notice it in 2013. I was in college, not really eating my best, eating in the cafeteria, and then like ordering pizza or going to McDonald's or something like that. Now, I was working out then, not super consistently, but I was working out more than I was eating healthy, if that makes sense. So I kind of started in 2013. I had a lot of ups and downs that year. I didn't think that I was gonna be graduating college, which I ended up graduating, so yay. Um, but I didn't think that I was because I had bad grades, so I was kind of a stress eater as well. And then I was also working then, so I was kind of balancing the stress of working and you know trying to find internships and then going to college. So it was kind of like a lot of stress all in one. We had some things happen with my financial aid. But towards the end of 2013 is really when I decided that, you know what, something's gotta give. You know, it's basically kind of just like enough is enough. We have to start somewhere and, you know, find things I like about myself and then also eat healthy. Then 2014 came and I was definitely eating better. I still didn't like know exactly what I was doing, but I was trying more so than 2013. And then 2015 when I started sharing fitness videos on YouTube. 2015 was probably my best year of the mind and body connection like listen we got to do this I feel the best when I eat healthy I feel the worst when I don't it's okay to like slip up it's okay to have a cheat day but like consistently eating good eating for my soul eating for my body losing weight just overall feeling great feeling my best when I eat healthy so that was kind of my drive in 2015 and yeah sorry that was a long answer but I wanted to give you guys like the full view XO Kiki Marie XO hey Sam hi girl what has been your biggest insecurity and how did you overcome it yes you can use my IG handle I asked you guys on Instagram do you guys want it to be do you want your question to be anonymous or do you want me to use your Instagram name? So that's what she's replying to. Love your videos. You're so motivational and keep me feeling positive. Love you, girl. I love you too. Thank you so much for the question. I love this question. I think that overall my biggest insecurity, like the most consistent one, like obviously there's things that pop in your head randomly, but the most consistent insecurity for me was definitely having big boobs growing up. And I know some people are like, oh, I love that problem, but I personally didn't want big boobs. And I had a B cup in fourth grade. I developed very early and I always would say to my mom, like I feel like it's taking my childhood away. Like all my friends are just putting on shirts and running outside and I have to put on a bra. And when I run, like the boys say, would say things. They'd say like, your boobs are bouncing. And it was just a tension that I didn't want. And I was also in dance class and I was trying to be a serious dancer at the time. And I remember my dance teacher saying rude comments like, oh, we're gonna have to tape your boobs or, oh, you can't wear that leotard anymore because things are popping out. And here I was not asking for that body. I didn't, like my mom had small boobs. I was just like, where did these come from? Like I didn't want big boobs. And I used to try like running outside, like hopefully like them getting smaller. And so yeah, that was at a young age. And then as I got older and in high school, I started getting even more self-conscious about them. I started like wearing big t-shirts and in high school I wore a uniform. So I would like always ask my mom to get the polo and we had to wear a polo in a size like two times bigger so that it would like, like fit loose so that you wouldn't see I had boobs. One thing that I realized overall about insecurities is that the more you focus on them and the more you bring attention to it, the more other people know. So like the more like, like, that I tried to hide that I had bigger boobs, the more comments I would get. And then like the less I tried to hide it and the less I even looked at them and like cared about them, then people wouldn't even say anything. Just like when we talk about law of attraction on my channel, shift your focus. So if you are really focused on any insecurity, guess what? You're gonna see more of it. You're gonna see other people mentioning it. But when you just let it go and like just brush it off, we're the only ones that really notice our insecurities. Okay, so my next question comes from Nikki Smithson. Hi, have you been to college? If so, what did you study? If you have pre previously answered this, I'm sorry, I'm new. Aw, yay, welcome to the family, I'm glad you're new. Um, and yes, I went to Fordham University and I studied business and a little bit of marketing, but mostly business. Okay, so next question from Rachel Perry 23 She asked, what's your favorite way to relax during a stressful week? 
definitely a bath or shower like I love like hot water and just like I love the scent of eucalyptus or like bath bombs or something in the bath and then in my shower I have this eucalyptus body wash and the whole shower turns into like this like eucalyptus like spa so I love turning my bathroom into a spa the other thing I like to do is binge watch TV shows. Like right now we're watching Fosters. So no matter how the day goes, I'm like, yes, I can't wait for like Fosters at night. I just started the show, so I have so much to catch up on. So like that gets me all excited. Like, yay, I can binge watch like all these seasons. The next question is from Lynn Campbell, Campbell 10. She has four questions. The first is, if you weren't doing YouTube, what would you be doing? Um, I think in another life, and I think this surprises people when I say this because they think I would be like a nutritionist or like, I don't know, something in the fitness industry, but I think in another life I was a realtor or something in like real estate because I have such a passion. Like, you guys don't even know this because it's super creepy, but on Sundays I go to open houses. Like, I'm just like obsessed and my parents, everyone in my family has their real estate license except me. As a kid, I would go to open houses with my mom and grandparents. First thing I would do when I would walk in is I would dart upstairs. <laughs> my mom would be like, oh, I'm sorry, that's my kid. I would dart into the master bathroom and like open up all of the cabinets and just like, mm -hmm. meanwhile, I'm five years old, like don't even know what I'm looking at. Question two is who do you watch on YouTube? So I watch a lot of different kinds of channels. I love my friend, Melissa Flores. She makes like beauty videos, vegan videos car vlogs, like everything. Another friend of mine makes like Law of Attraction videos, so I watch her videos. Lior, I'm sure you guys follow her if you like Law of Attraction. I love Superwoman. Me and Jared, okay, I have to tell you guys a funny story about Superwoman. Last year is when I found her channel, and I know she's huge and she's been around for a while, but last year is actually when I found her. Same week that I found her and like binge watched all her videos, I then was flying home to New York and she was on my plane. And I, guys, I'm a wuss. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go up to her, tell her I love her videos. She sees me staring at her nonstop, and finally she's just like, hey. <laughs> I was like, hi. <laughs> Next question is favorite ice cream flavor. So favorite ice cream flavor is from this place called Salt and Straw, and it's almond brittle. Oh my God. And then her fourth question is how many kids do you want? Um. However many I'm supposed to have. Okay, so my next question comes from Brooklyn BXBE, and her question is, what made you start doing YouTube and what challenges come with it? P.S. I love you, your videos keep me motivated. I love you too, you're so sweet. Why well, I started YouTube in like the way, way, way beginning, I actually ended up deleting that channel, but I put out my first video in 2009. It was a purple smoky eye. I don't want like the Mac laptops, the, what's it called? Photo booth, it was filmed with photo booth. And I filmed my purple smoky eye. Um, and I was like, you know what, girls are going to prom soon. And I did my own makeup for my prom. So I was like, you know, I wanna show them how you could just do your own makeup for prom. I was telling you guys, YouTube was so different that people couldn't monetize, the quality wasn't as great, but it was overall a fun place. And I knew I wanted to be on YouTube. I think that the problem was then is I was still in high school, still feeling insecure. I remember I told some friends about it in school, thinking that they would think like, oh my God, that's so cool. Like you shared your purple smoky eye. But instead they like kind of laughed at me and were like, wait, what are you doing? Like that's so random. And I felt really self-conscious and ended up deleting it. That's kind of when it kind of sparked my interest. And every year I'd kind of think about like restarting up that channel. It wasn't until 2014 when I actually restarted my channel and just started putting out content and started putting out videos and it was a great creative outlet for me while I was going to college and I wasn't super consistent with it because I was in college and failing. I loved the whole process. I loved the filming part, I loved the editing part, all of that. So that's kind of when I got started and how I got started. And then I guess the biggest challenges that come with YouTube that I think a lot of people don't see because they just see the finished product is actually creating the videos. Like a lot of technical issues that can go wrong and uploading issues and there's, you know, technical stuff. So I saw a lot of questions in my DM as well about starting up a YouTube channel and advice for YouTubers and all of that. So I think I'm just gonna combine that in this question since we're talking about it. But I think another thing that people don't see is the pain and sacrifice that goes behind creating content. To do one thing, you do have to give up on other things. And I remember when I said, you know, I do want to take YouTube seriously and I do want to put out great content and, you know, commit to two days a week. I started with Monday and Wednesday like I'm doing now, but now I've added in Friday. 
but I uploaded every Monday and Wednesday for two years without seeing anything. You know, my channel grew very slowly and a lot of people now get very discouraged who will reach out to me that they've been on YouTube for a month and their channel didn't really grow yet or they're, you know, getting discouraged and this and that. And, you know, for me, I stayed consistent for two years before I saw anything. Sorry guys, now we're doing vlog style, but my camera started to overheat and I had to shut it off for a little bit. But I love you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was something a little different, a Q&A. I hope you got to learn a little bit more about me and just overall have fun hanging out. So I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in Friday's video. So happy hump day and have a good day. Bye.